What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to Tour Life. Today is September 17th, and we're doing a little bit of a, obviously a different one. I'm here right now back in Lynchburg in one of our podcast studios. Uh, Yuli's not joining us this week, mainly because some crazy stuff is happening. Uh, I'll get into that very, very soon, but we got a lot to talk about in a very short amount of time. So this is going to be a quick one. So buckle up. We got potentially one of the craziest disc golf scandals to ever come out to ever come to light. Uh, we'll be breaking that all down. We also will be previewing the GMC, who's in, who's out, who needs to make a move. And then we'll be finishing it off with some listener questions at the end of the show. Um, so this week, I flew out to Baltimore. It's been a very busy week. We had a wedding on Friday. Then I had a wedding on Saturday that was in Baltimore. Me and Kelsey flew out there. Uh, the Ravens were actually playing the Raiders at that time as well. So we said, hey, let's stick around. Let's go to the game. Turned out to be one of the craziest games I've ever been a been to a uh, wild back and forth game and a huge, huge upset. The biggest upset of the week, actually, uh, with the Raiders beating the Ravens. So that was really fun. Then I flew, uh, took the first flight in the morning. I think I got on the flight at five o'clock. If you've ever done a five o'clock flight, you know, it's kind of brutal waking up at three o'clock, but here I am in Lynchburg this week. We are filming a very special project for you guys. It will be releasing probably around the time the tour championship tour championship it's kind of wraps up. So if you're still like, man, I want to see more disc golf, be on the lookout for this. If you have not yet subscribed to our main channel, Foundation Disc Golf, now is the perfect time. You can click the link in the description or you can just search Foundation Disc Golf. Go subscribe there because uh, this series is definitely one you're going to not want to miss. Uh, with that being said, we also have some foundation umbrellas available right now. So definitely go check those out in the store. It's been a pretty rainy day today. And I have to tell you, when it comes to disc golf umbrella umbrellas, if you will, the size matters. The size absolutely matters. Uh, you want to be able to cover yourself. You want to be able to cover your bag. And if it's too tiny of an umbrella, you end up getting like the, the runoff of the water just like drops right onto your bag, which absolutely makes no sense at, 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 at all. So this um, umbrella... 10 out of 10. You got the dark horse approval of it. Go pick yourself up one. And it's cool. You know, if you want to support foundation, we got some cool ones. We might even do a tour life one. Who knows? We'll see in the future what that holds, but let's jump right into it. Um, we're going to, we're going to tell, well, right, we're actually going to hold that story. Silas, we'll hold that story. We're going to jump into what's going on this upcoming week at GMC. The first thing I want to say is it does look like the disc golf pro tour is looking into trying to find other ways to generate money. Now, are they going outside of the norm, like outside of the population of people that they're normally trying to get money from? I don't believe so. But with some of these things, I guess it could entice some people that maybe wouldn't drive in or wouldn't come out to watch the tournament to now do so because they have other stuff to do. And so what do I mean by all this? Well, they're going to have public tea time. So it looks like you're going to be able to play the course. Uh, GMC, for those that don't know, there's two courses, Fox Run, that's the open course. And then Brewster is the one in the woods. It looks like they are going to allow public tea times for these courses. So if you want to go out and play these courses before the pros do, before the tournament happens, you can. The other thing they're doing, it looks like they're doing a glow golf round at Fox Run. $20 entry. Now, there only are three people that have qualified or have entered into this um, fun event. So if you are interested, definitely go check that out. You can find the links for this on the Disc Golf Pro Tour's Twitter uh, and all their socials. But they're going to be doing a glow golf round at Fox Run Meadows. That sounds like it'd be pretty fun. Um, uh, just some information. It's brought to you by the Disc Golf Pro Tour and the team on the fly disc golf at the 2024 disc crafts green mountain championship at smugglers notch resort it's on thursday september 19th from 8 p.m to 11 p.m they're going to be playing a nine hole layout on fox run uh the red tees from holes one two three and 13 through 18 parking will be available at smugs disc golf center uh top three scores will receive a payout through the disc golf pro tour shop 
Uh, there will be an optional five dollar ace pool, and uh, money goes back into give a toy for joy event. So it looks like. Uh, they're probably going to generate a little bit of money, I think, from this, but also they're going to be giving some back. So I like that a lot. Uh, they're playing in threesomes, Silas. Silas, they're playing in threesomes. Actually, I lied. Three is the minimum. Dang it. Uh, not the maximum. Shoot. I thought we might have had something going on here. Um, but there are going to, you have to have three people to play in your group. Um, and then they're also doing a C tier at GMC as well. So it looks like they are trying to have some events built around the Disc Golf Pro Tour one that maybe get some excitement for people to come in to play these events and then stick around and watch the tournament. I don't mind that at all. And also, if these things are generating a little bit of cash as well, those are things I don't mind at all. I would love them to experiment with this stuff more. I was uh, Earlier in the season, I was a part of a... Um, shoot, I forgot what that's called, Silas. When, um, what is that called? Uh, Pro Am, there it is. Pro Am. I was a part of Pro Am, so we had four people pay to play with a professional, and they kind of got mixed up. And then we went out and played together, and you know, the best scoring group got something too at the end. I thought that was a lot of fun. The people I played with, they thought that was a great experience as well. So I'm all for the Disc Golf Pro Tour trying to find new ways to generate income, and I think this is a fantastic idea to do so. So if you do end up doing any of any three of these events please let me know my twitter's not hacked anymore let's go so you can hit me up over on twitter let me know how they went if you went to any of these let me know i am very curious uh with that being said let's jump into the gmc preview now that tournament is going down this week and um crazy stat here that was pulled up by the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Uh, Ricky has played at the Green Mountain Championship multiple times throughout the years, going all the way back to 2013. Now, it wasn't always a Disc Golf Pro Tour event. It wasn't always a playoff event. Obviously, this being the first year of it being a playoff event, I believe, or was last year the first year? Might have been last year. Someone fact check, fact check me on that. But, uh, he hasn't finished outside of sixth place. His average finish is 2.11. He's won this tournament five times. He's gotten second once and two thirds and one sixth place. So the dude plays really well at this tournament. He's been having a fantastic season. So he's definitely going to be one of the favorites going into the G, uh, Green Mountain uh, Championship this weekend. Some of the no other notable names that are going to be in attendance. Again, this is the first playoff event. So if you are a big time player, you are at this event. Gannon Burr, Ricky, Calvin, Isaac, Chris Dickerson, Ezra, Robinson, Nicholas, Matty O, Paul McBeth, Kyle Klein, Simon Lazat, Evan Smith, A B, Proctor, Eagle, Luke Taylor, Joey Buckets, Joel Freeman, Andrew Marweed, uh, Aaron Gossage, Gavin Rathbun, Vino, Adam Hammes, Mason Ford. The list goes on and on. So this is a pretty stout field now there is some weird stuff going on towards the bottom of the uh the bottom of this which we'll maybe get into at the end of the show um but this is gonna be a good one i'm very excited now do i think these courses do these create the the craziest test no i mean there it's it's pretty well known knowledge that both these courses are fairly short uh, did they do any changes to make it a little bit more challenging with the discs Selection off the tees, I don't know. I would love to see it. This is a very uh, mid-putter friendly. Brewster especially, you're not really throwing anything more than a mid and putter on that many holes out there. Um, not too many, you know, par fours either where you're having to throw two big shots. I'm Fox Meadow, I think there's like two holes two to three holes that are kind of like that. But other than that, they're all pretty manageable short distance holes. Um, so it's not an incredibly long course. Uh, to be fair, it's not even really like what I would think an average course should be on the Pro Tour. But they are fun courses. I like the contrast between being out in the open, having to deal with the wind. It normally is very windy up there. And also going into the woods as well. So it should be an exciting one. Definitely tune in uh, this week for the GMC. Looking over at the tour standings and kind of see like who's on the bubble, who's moving forward. Um, 
So we got tour championship cut line right now. Eagle McMahon is last one in at 412 points. Last, uh, sorry, first one in, last one in. First one out with 405 points is Ezra Aderhold, actually. That is a, a little bit surprising to me to see Ezra just outside. Um, but looking towards the end, man, that's kind of crazy. He gained some points at Deglo, but outside of that, he's gained like in the last two months. Outside of Deglo, he's gained 17 points. A lot of these tournaments, he didn't gain any points because you know he had better finishes earlier on this season. Uh, some other players that currently are sitting just outside the, the cut line for the Tour Championship. And remember, too, we still have the MVP. So you have GMC. You advance on to MVP, and then from there, that's where you narrow it down. So you still have, if you're around the cut line, you still will have two tournaments to get through, but these are some of the notable names that are just outside. You got Ben Calloway, Bradley Williams, Kevin Jones, who's been playing well towards the end of the season as of late, James Conrad, Greg Barsby, um, Major champion Corey Ellis, Sullivan Tipton, Alden Harris. That's a little bit surprising. He's all the way down to 49. Uh, let's see. Any other names? Chris Clemens. That's a surprising one, too, as 58. Now, who are they going to be trying to you know, make moves on? You got Eagle at 32, Evan Smith at 31, Emerson Keith at 30, Mason Ford at 29, Luke Humphreys at 28, and Casey White at 27. Now, the point difference with all those, all those guys are within 50 points. So you can definitely make up 50 points on some people in two events. So realistically, I'm thinking, you know, there's probably five to seven guys that are in right now that are probably need to be playing well these next two events. And there's probably 10, 10 to 15 guys that are out that I don't want to go that far. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, I'd go down to five. Uh, I'd go down to Bradley. I'll take Bradley. Bradley's at 364. I think I think with two good f- tournaments, Bradley can get in maybe as well. Uh, but outside of that, Garrett's at 335. That's just too many points back. So you're really looking at Bradley, Matt Bell, Jake Hebenheimer, Benjamin Calloway. You, you know, Paul's not playing anymore, so Yuli's out, and then Ezra Aderhold. So a couple guys that could come up into the mix and a couple guys that could slip down. So it will be exciting and interesting to kind of see what this uh, – um, the playoffs have in store for these guys. All right, Silas, you ready? Big story of the week. I mean, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe this when I saw this. This was, this was wild. And and you know, of all weeks when there really wasn't that much to talk about, I'm sure there's people that are going to be out there talking about these these Q series events and whatnot. If you want to listen to breakdown on who won. By all means, I bet Griplock's probably is going to talk about it. We might talk about it a little bit on debate night. I, I have no real interest in, in, in talking about these events, so we're just not going to cover them here. So there wasn't really any disc golf to cover, uh, not much player stuff going on. So this kind of just fell into our lap on a episode that we didn't really have too much going on. And uh, this is the big one. This is like one of the biggest stories maybe ever to come out of disc golf. Just the craziness of this. So this tournament is called the Masters at Bud Hill. And I know a lot of you probably already know a lot of this information, but I'm just going to cover all the information first, and then I'll give my take on it for those that might be out of the loop. So the tournament is the Masters of Bud Hill. It's supposed to take place in October. It's a PDGA A tier this year. It's in Fraser, Miss Memphis, Tennessee, and the tournament director is Rod Norton. He makes a post on Disc Golf Scene, the website that we basically use to sign into tournaments. Uh, he makes a post on there basically addressing everyone that has entered in this tournament, and it goes like this. Masters players... I am broken and embarrassed to have to tell you all this. I am canceling the 2024 Masters at Bud Hill. I've tried every way I could think of to salvage this, and I alone am responsible. I use Masters money to fund events and vending fees in the beginning of the season after not working through the winter. I have done this each year, and as the season goes on, the money gets replaced. 
That was not the case this year. Through some personal personal medical issues, higher costs, and much lower participation in our sport, I just couldn't catch up. It has been a horrible financial year. Bad enough that I'm having to file for bankruptcy. I am beyond embarrassed and broken that I'm letting so many friends and loved ones down. This has nothing to do with the Daniels or Bud Hill. This is on me. I want you all to know that I will repay every one of you, but it won't happen overnight. I'm working on liquidating my inventory and will begin refunding when that happens. It will not cover everyone, but I will continue getting them out as quickly as I can. Once again, I am so sorry that this has happened. I love the Masters and all of you. I know feelings will vary, but I accept responsibility for my mistakes, and I hope that I can give that I can forg- that you can forgive me. Respectfully, Jonathan Ray. Touring promotions, dynamic this. Now I'm a little confused here. Why does it say why does it say Rod Norton at the top and it's Jonathan Ray? What's going on here, Silas? What am I missing? What? Rod Norton's a superhero name? Oh, okay. Uh so that's, his name is Jonathan Ray. Okay, so this is Jonathan Ray. It looks like he has some sort of connection with Dynamic Discs, uh, with touring and promotions. I don't know how deep that connection goes. I haven't seen anything from Dynamic Discs in response to this, which is, I think, a little bit surprising since it's literally in his header of his name. Or well, It's not a header. What is that called? Like where, uh, where it says touring promotions, Dynamic Discs. That's like your uh, signature... Sign- yeah, like the signature line. So like he's conne- he's connected in that way. So it is a little bit surprising that I haven't seen anything from Dynamic Disc re- re- response to this. Now, obviously, I had to first go over to Reddit to just see what the heck people were saying over there. Some of the top comments. Uh, this one was from Resistance. They said, "Usually my pon <laughs> in quotes. Usually my Ponzi scheme works great." Oopsies. That's, I mean, that's pretty funny. Uh, another one was from Mental Science. They said, I'm no lawyer, but in my law, but in layman's perspective, that would be misappropriation of funds. And the last time I checked, that would be criminal charges. Bankruptcy doesn't shield you from criminal, uh, criminal liability. And I'm pretty sure he admitted to committing the crime. If anything, Silas, I think he admitted to committing multiple crimes over the last years. By saying that he usually does this year after year. You, a lot of crimes. Um, so if that wasn't already like crazy, we have Terry, Terry Miller. He, I believe, I can't tell if this was him responding. I can't tell if this was him responding to Jonathan's post or if this was him posting publicly on Jonathan's Facebook page. I feel like it's him publicly posting on Jonathan's Facebook page is what it looks like. So Terry says, I can, and and for those that don't know how Facebook works, if you're friends with either one of these people, Jonathan Ray or Terry Miller, and especially if you're friends with both of them, there's a good chance that this will pop up on your timeline. So I don't know if Terry knew that, but and a lot of people are going to see this, and a lot of people did. So Terry writes to Jonathan on Facebook, I can only imagine the challenges you're faced with right now, and I don't envy said struggles. Anyone talking blank about you simply doesn't know you or how big your heart is. If there is anything I can do to help, let me know. Plenty of people do have your back, and you'll get through this. All right. Um... From the wise words of my wife, put it in reverse, Terry. Um, uh, so before we go any further, I, I got to say this. If there was any PR in disc golf, right? If this guy was connected at any way to Dynamic Discs and Dynamic Discs had a PR team or if Terry had a PR team or if the Disc Golf Pro Tour had a PR team and because Terry works for the PR, uh, Disc Golf Pro Tour or is contracted through the Disc Golf Pro Tour, if there was someone telling people what to do or maybe not what to do, uh, I don't think, Silas, either one of these posts would go up the way they did. Uh, first one being 
this Jonathan Ray guy, like a lot of this stuff in here, I think should not have been said. And, um, I don't know. That's just a crazy post to make. We'll kind of break that down. But the Terry response, it's like, okay, I, if you want, if this guy's your friend, and I guess that's what it is. It seems like this is your friend. Text the dude. Like, shoot the guy a text being like, bro, is there anything I can do with you? Sounds like you're going through a tough time. I'm here for you. Because th what this inside is, let me know if I'm reading this wrong. What this looks to me, if I'm just an outsider and I see this pop up on my Facebook feed, is it seems like Terry is like, Terry is like feeling sorry for this guy. And it's like, this guy just embezzled $25,000. He basically stole money from people, lots of people. Um, so it's just a, it's a wild, wild post. Now, I don't think I was the only one to have that kind of reaction to this because it was posted amongst, you know, Facebook groups. It was posted on Reddit. It was posted all over social media and a lot of people. Now, obviously there are some people saying, and there's someone on this post, Chris says more of this, please. We need to be supporting our friends in times of need. No kicking. I don't know what else he said because it is a screenshot, but so, the, you know, there were some people that were siding with Terry about saying like, yes, we need to support this guy. But I got to tell you that the vast majority that I saw were like anti the Jonathan, uh, excuse me, I got to say his name right. The Jonathan Ray post and anti the Terry post uh, to the point of where Terry had to make a response for his response, which says you already know if you're making a response for a response, you're, you're in the. Yeah, it's not going good. It's not going good. So he responds. Uh, so here we are. My attempt will be to post here once and walk away from it. It's wild. I have to type this up, but here it goes. My post did not excuse J Ray's wrongdoings. My post did not commend J Ray's handling of the situation. My post did not make light of J Ray's accounting. My post did not disregard anyone's valid frustrations with J Ray. My post did not further yell, scream, or berate him or stuff he's already heard and knows. My post did not suggest he's off the hook or that others should simply be cool with it. My post did not give him a pass or exonerate him. My post did show support to a friend that's th clearly going through some crap. My post did attempt to show empathy. My post did recognize that this guy has been a pillar in the community for more than a decade and this is out of character for him and clearly it is not part of his otherwise solid reputation. Uh, J. Ray effed up and rather than me piling on, I wish to see him back, uh, battle back out of it and remedy the situation because that's what it means to support a friend, even when they F up and dig themselves a hole. You offer a hand or a shovel, but you don't need to kick more dirt on them while in the bottom of the hole. I ran event, uh, and then he says something about, I don't, no one cares. Okay. So, Silas, let's break this down real quick. Um, are you with me? That if someone does something really bad and my post, I make a post about that person telling, saying how awesome that person is and brother, you don't deserve what you're getting or let me, let me X that not don't deserve, but basically making a post similar to what Terry's first post was right. Terry's first post. Uh, I can only, you know, showing empathy. I can only imagine the challenges you face with right now. And I don't envy said struggles. You put yourself into these challenges. You did that. Uh, anyone talking crap about you simply doesn't know you or how big your heart is. That doesn't matter. I don't care how nice of a person you are. You stole money. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? Let me know. Plenty of people. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. You want to help Terry start, start dishing out money and he can pay you back. Like that would be super helpful to all the people that paid money. Um, but it's just, it's a crazy thing to say. Cause I don't think Terry's second post is good either. Like he's basically saying like he didn't do any of these things, but he kind of did by not addressing any of them. When you don't say anything, you kind of are, address, you're kind of in a way are saying that it's, it, you're not addressing it. Um, and then also the other thing is like, 
This is just a crazy statement. My post did recognize that this guy has been a pillar in the community for more than a decade. And this is out of character for him and clearly is not part of his otherwise solid rep. Terry, did you read what he wrote? Let me go back and read what he wrote. He literally said, I use master's money to fund events and vending fees in the beginning of the season after not working through the winter. I have done this each year as the reason, as the season goes. How long has this tournament been around, Silas? Like Terry saying that this guy's been a pillar for a decade in disc golf, I would argue that this guy's been embezzling money for a decade in disc golf. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I don't know. This is this is a crazy thing. It's crazy to me. No one is, no one is just. There's certain people in disc golf that they easily have a line, and they're like, if you're on this side of the line, I don't care what you do. I am going to support you and back you. And then they're like, if you're on this side of the line, though, if you do the same thing as these people over here, Silas, real quick, if I made this exact post. I, now, me and Terry, Terry probably doesn't have the same relationship with me as he does with this guy. Yeah. Does Terry make a post saying, guys, we're going a little bit too much after Brody. He's been a great thing for disc golf. Let, you know, let's, you know, does Terry make that post if I do the same exact post saying that I have embezzled people's money? No shot. No, it's it's literally. Uh, I like this person. I agree with this person. This person's on my side. Can't do wrong. Size. I don't know about you, but there are certain things that I don't care if you're my friend or how close you are to my friend. There are certain things that uh, I draw the line, and I'm like, I can't support that. Right? There's a couple things now. There's some obvious ones that I can say on here. Murder. Like, that's a clear one. Like, if you kill someone, mm, that's going to be tough for me. Uh, drinking under the influence. That's another one that I don't care how much I love you, how much you're a friend of mine. I can't support that. And I'm not going to show outward support to be like, hey, man, I know you're going through some tough times. I'm here for you. Brother, you knew exactly what you were doing. This is not some weird thing. He's been doing this for years. Here's another thing, Silas. Do we even know that, the, would we ever have known this even happened if he somehow was able to pull it off again? No. The only reason we're hearing this is because he got caught. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I think this is a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. Um, and I mean, it gets even crazier here because the PDGA's director of competition, Rebecca Duffy, she decided also, Silas, to respond as well. So she responded, I believe this also looks like some sort of Facebook screenshot. Uh, she responded to Robert Ryan's post or comment who said, he needs to make it right to everybody. Spending money that's not yours is wrong. And Rebe Rebecca Duffy responded, he will make it right. And then Robert responded to that saying, PDGA needs to suspend him indefinitely from running any event ever. And Rebecca responded, let PDGA do their due diligence. I, Silas, real quick, real quick. Um, if I walk into a police station and I tell them, hey guys, I just want you to know I embezzled $26,000. Do they go, hey, Hey man, I appreciate you telling me that we have to do our due diligence. Um, so go on your merry way, turn around, keep living your life, go back out those doors, keep doing your thing. We're going to do our due diligence and then, uh, we'll let you know, or do they just put you in handcuffs? Yeah. What? Like he literally confessed to a crime. So the, the idea that the PDA has to do due diligence, I don't, what, what do they have to do? There's nothing to do. Like when someone says, Hey, by the way, I have literally done probably one of the worst things you can possibly do as a tournament director. The easiest thing for the PGJ to do is come out and say, guys, do not worry. This guy is no longer playing. You know, what's crazy Silas. The PGA is willing to give a life ban to someone for punching someone in an event, which I'm not saying that's not good, right? Like, yes, you should be banned for punching, for, for literally causing violence like that. Probably is a bannable offense. Yeah. 
They're willing to very quickly come out and do that. But someone confessing to embezzling a bunch of money, they're not willing to come out and do anything? Wow. Also, what investigation do they have to do? He admitted. Correct. There is no investigation. He literally has confessed to the crime. Uh, Rebecca continues to go on. I believe he's being punished enough by the hate. That's no, he's not. Uh, excuse me. No, that is an incorrect statement. He owned up to it, which again, that kind of contradicts the fact that you have to do due diligence because you literally just said he owned up to it. Uh, and the PDJ knows about it, which again, says. It isn't my call. It's the disciplinary committee, and they have SOPs they have to... What do they have to follow? What is there have to... What are we doing? Um, I mean, that's just a crazy thing. Now, obviously, there's... I'm going to do the classic disc golf thing. I've met Rebecca. I've had multiple conversations with Rebecca. I really like Rebecca. I think she does do a pretty good job of being hands, uh, you know, hands on and on the field and trying to do stuff. But again, like Silas, you know, here on tour life, it does. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care anything about that. If you do something that I don't agree with, I'm going to call it out. And I think it's rightfully so because if I do something or I say something on this podcast that you don't agree grief with, you should rightfully call me out as well. It goes both ways, and I'm completely fine with that. This is just crazy. Um, it does beg the question, like, does the PDJ need to do a better job vetting? Like, do they need to have a little bit more idea of where these funds are going? Like, the fact that the PGA has had no idea that someone was doing this Ponzi scheme, someone was embezzling money, whatever you want to call it, someone was committing crimes around their tournaments for years, and they had no idea. Should that be anyone's concern? Like, should that worry anyone? To me, it puts up red flags. Uh, well, I mean, they, 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 I think they just need to do one. I think you do a better job vetting. Um, and then also like, if you are going to put your name on something, you know, the PDGA, right. I, I'm sure there are ways that they can have money not go into like the tournament director's bank account, yeah. right. Have it fun, have it funnel through them. And then, like, now there's some sort of bank. I, I, there, there's ways. There's got to be. There's smarter people out there than me, Silas, that definitely know of ways to make sure that money isn't going into someone's pocket for them to. And, and here's the thing. I, you know, the guy says that he was using money to pay for medical bills, personal medical bills, um, which, you know, is that a way of him trying to get on the public side of like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it to stuff that I really need. I it, I don't know. Yeah, and he also didn't just do it on medical bills. He literally said, too, he also was using money on other tournaments and also on vending. So it wasn't like he just, I, I don't know. It's just a crazy thing, and I, I don't know this guy at all. But if the PDJ wants to be taken seriously at all, and this is the big issue with disc golf, with disc golf, is there's just so many organizations that do not run like normal organizations outside of disc golf. They just don't. Like a normal organization would not let this happen. And if someone did do something, like this guy might go to jail, size. He might. I'm sure there's lawyers listening and watching and disc golf law. I can't wait to see the video he does on this. But it's like. I don't know, man. I, to me, it's just this is this was just a wild, wild story to read, and uh, with some of the responses I saw too, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a crazy one. Let me know what you guys think on that. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Uh, this is the best teeing surface. So Avery Jenkins actually just recently uh, came out with a statement saying that if installed correctly. Turf is disc golf's ultimate teeing surface. Now, the only thing, and I think I guess this matters also with cement as well, is 
If you can have one of those brush, like those brushers, those boot brushers, I don't know what they're really called, but it's where you can step on one side to make it sturdy, and then you kind of push your shoe up in, you know, there's brushes on the bottom, the brushes on the side, and you kind of slide your shoe in and out real quick, and it gets all the mud off. If we can have one of those right next to tee pads, turf is really freaking good. And I agree, when installed correctly, turf is really, really good. Now, it gets really bad, two things. Gets really bad when it gets muddy. Like, it's almost a nightmare when it gets muddy. And that's why we need those brushes. And then the other thing that gets bad is if it's not treated, then it gets, like, matted down. And it it basically becomes unthrowable in a section that's matted down. It's just so slippery. So if it's treated well, installed well, I might be agreeing here with Avery that it it might be the ultimate teeing surface uh, going forward. All right. Couple listener questions to wrap up, and then your boy has to jump on a flight. If you're wondering why I'm talking so fast, well, sometimes I talk quick when it's just by myself, but I'm also trying to catch a flight here. So we're packing a lot of stuff in all at once here. All right. Couple listener questions to finish it out here. How can people not qualified for the playoffs play in the playoffs? This is crazy, Silas. I got an email. Yesterday, I just saw it today because obviously, you know, size we were filming from what well, I, I, I got on a flight at five and then we didn't stop filming until five. Yeah. yeah, we filmed until so I got on a plane at five in the morning, filmed until five in the evening. Then we had game night over at Hunter's at six. And then when we were done with that, I passed out. So I didn't check my emails at all yesterday. Checked my email today when we were done filming. And guess what, Silas? I had an email that said what? Congratulations, Brody. You have qualified for the Disc Golf Green Mount or Discraft Green Mount Championship. Brother, I did not deserve to play in the playoffs. Playoffs? Uh, the, where am I on the list? Oh, let's let's pull up. Let's pull up real quick where I am in the standings. So I believe it's top 100 got in. Um, I'm at 149, and they sent me an email. Yikes! Yikes! I don't. I mean, this is this to me is a no brainer. Uh, if we're going to call it the playoffs, Silas, if you don't make the playoffs, guess what? You don't get to play in the playoffs. The fact that they're adding on people. And that's why I wanted to throw in some names here. Uh, we've got Christopher Robbins. Okay. The fact that the guy from Pooh, okay. Pooh's owner, Christopher Robbins is in the playoffs. That's wild to me. Hey, shout out to him. I love Pooh. One of my first, uh, one of my first um, teddy bears growing up. But Christopher Robbins, I don't know who you are, brother. And I do not think you qualify for the playoffs. But you're in here. Um, the last person that should be in should be Rasmus at 100. Then you got Jaden Rye at 99. Linus at 98. Uh, Drew Gibson is in there. Is Drew in here? I think he is. I think he's in the turn. Did he sign up? He might not be signed up. Do I see him on this list? Hold on. He didn't sign up. Okay, so he's not playing in it. I think I think it's top 100, though, or in. I think is what you had to be to get into the playoffs, right? Am I crazy or is it a top 150? 100? It's 100. Gets into GMC, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Tristan Tanner, love the guy. He's 124. Should not be in, but he is. Uh, Connor O'Reilly, he was 132. Should not be in, but he is. Again, this is just one of those things of where we're losing credibility. We're losing credibility. We're trying to do stuff, right? Playoffs. What else has playoffs? Well, pretty much every other major sport. Guess what doesn't happen in every other major sport? They add people that didn't qualify to the playoffs to the playoffs. So uh, another weird thing. So to answer your question, no. 
If you did not qualify in the playoffs, you should not be able to play in the playoffs. Uh, last question here. Do you think anyone below the tour championship cut line will make a push in the playoff events to get in? Um, so we kind of looked at that a little bit earlier. And I basically said, I'm going down to... So I think Ezra Aderhold, Yuli... Well, Yuli's out. So really, Ezra Aderhold, Benjamin Callaway, Jake Hebenheimer, Matt Bell, Bradley Williams are really the only five that I think have a little bit, a legitimate shot of getting in. I love Ezra. Ezra does not play good at Maple Hill, from what I remember. I think he's also said that as well. I think he will get to. I think he will get some points. I think Ezra actually does get in. I think Ezra actually does get in. Um, give me Ezra and give me Benjamin Callaway. I think Ezra and Benjamin Callaway make it in. I don't know who falls out, but I'm going to say Ezra and Benjamin Callaway are the two guys below the cut line that actually will make it into the tour championship. Ezra, don't let me down. Um, but those are your questions for this week. Crazy week. Crazy week. Was not expecting to have one of the biggest scandals of disc golf. Uh, also wasn't respect. Wasn't, I mean, I guess I should have suspected that people were going to support him. Um, it's sad to see not because we shouldn't be supporting people. It's just like, brother, it's okay to like, not publicly tell people to like, Hey, we shouldn't really be going after this guy. It's it's okay for someone to feel the heat when they do something crazy like that. So um, with that being said, crazy week in disc golf. Next week, we're back to normal schedule. You'll be back. We'll be back. We'll probably have the winner of GMC, hopefully both an MPO and FPO. And then we'll probably have some bubble players. I kind of want to get some bubble guys on there. Some of the people that we were just talking about that have to kind of make a move in one of these last tournaments to try to get into the tour championship. Because again, Remember, guys, uh, if you're in the tour championship, you have a chance to win, right? You have a chance to win, and you can win a whole lot of money. So it is a big deal. Uh, with that being said, though, that is Tour Life this week. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for liking down below. Thank you for listening if you do on Apple or Spotify or any of those things. And make sure to tune in. A lot of you guys aren't watching Debate Night. Make sure you guys tune in to Debate Night. We post that on Thursdays. Great show. We're going to be going all over a lot of these topics. And if you're someone that's like, hey, Brody's wrong, tune into debate night because there's other people that agree exactly with what you're thinking. And you can see us go back and forth. It is a fun time. With that being said, take it easy, my friends.